And uh, so I cherish uh, my good friendships, too, at, like Cheats. And uh, we go out to lunch three, four times a week, and Dave Lepp and, and Terry Scribeck, that's our lunch group or whatever, you know. And, and uh, uh, we just had a fun time doing that, and they had promised that I can still go out with them once in a while. So I would definitely would take advantage of that. But uh, uh, some highlights, I guess, too, from, uh, from my career at St. Thomas is uh, – I love to practice every day, and I like to go out there and, and get something done. And uh, so you got to practice with a purpose. I'm sure Johnny Tower, I've heard him talk about that a little bit. But you know what? Practice hard and, and carry yourself well. And then get to the game, you relax and have some fun and do what you've been practicing in practice. It's pretty simple. But uh, uh, going to Cuba was just a, a definite highlight for me. And, and I'm a guy that uh, really never got out of my own backyard. And uh, um, going to Cuba, I'm thinking, what are we going to Cuba for, you know? <laughs> Everybody kept telling me it was going to be great. And, and when we went down there, I can truly say that it was probably the best experience of my life. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and if, you, if anybody ever gets a chance, go down and visit a third world country and, and uh, do things with them and learn about their culture and all that. That was just uh, those kids here that were on our team. Okay, they learned a tremendous amount. And, and, and they learned a tremendous amount in the area of being good people because they had to communicate with, with the Cuban kids and look, talk about their values and all that stuff, you know. And, and uh, it was just an unbelievable experience. And if I had to talk about that, it might be for 45 minutes. So we certainly don't want to do that. But it was an unbelievable experience. It only happened at St. Thomas. Okay, and, and uh, um, I think that uh, going there, winning a couple of national championships and that is not high on pri my priority list okay, right now it just isn't the uh, it's just really important is that you conduct yourself it's a path to get there and how you how you carry yourself win or lose how you practice that stuff that's that's the most important thing to me it's not winning the national championship in fact, in sports, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in that they give out entirely too many trophies and too many awards for everybody, you know, and it's absolutely ridiculous. In fact, excuse me, but our media today, okay, if you don't win the championship, they sort of consider you a loser. And I can remember when I was growing up and, and uh, uh, when you were a young kid and we took uh, fourth place and we said, all right, we took fourth. Nowadays, do you think you could ever say that? Kids are embarrassed if they don't win the championship. It's mostly because of the media and the pressure put on them or whatever. But uh, uh, anyway, I'm getting off track a little bit. And I love St. Thomas, and it has been so good to me. And, and I just can't thank everybody because I'd have to have a list uh, be like a phone book, I think. And so you have to excuse me for that. And, uh, but I wouldn't change one minute of my time here. And I was fortunate to be in a couple of other locations before I came here. They were both very, very good to me, and, and uh, I enjoyed the experience there too, but nothing can top St. Thomas. And I'm still recruiting kids, and, and, and that's how I sell the school. You know, I, say, I tell every, all the kids that come here, I say, hey, look at we got scholarships. They think they can go D1 and get a scholarship. Well, in baseball, there isn't very many scholarships, but we got a scholarship, and our scholarship is that Come to St. Thomas, you get a good education. You're going to graduate, and you're going to get a great start on a career. And don't even think about comparing our scholarship to the D1 or D2s because it just isn't there. If you want to sit down and talk to me about it, I'll be glad to talk to you. So that's recruiting. St. Thomas is a great place to go to. And, and if you're talking about being successful in life and getting a great start on a career, hey, there's no level of schools that can compare to us, none whatsoever. And, and I feel really good about, uh, about that, telling them that. And, and every single kid, you probably remember me saying that to you. And if you came into St. Thomas and you met with me, uh, the first thing I'll, I'll ask you is, why, uh, why would you like to go to St. Thomas? And if they say it's baseball, I tell them, well, you're going to go to the wrong school, and I advise you not to go here. 
and then I sit down and straighten them out a little bit about what's important and uh, so forth. So again, this school has been tremendous, and I'm talking a little bit too long here, I think, but um, I can't, uh, I can't ever pay it back enough, and and so I just consider myself a very, very fortunate man to be. Uh, connected with all the people here and all the kids here that I've been through and, and so forth. So it's just been wonderful for me and I just thank everybody out there, okay, that have come to this meeting. In fact, uh, uh, well, Steve, is that enough? That's enough. <laughs> when people ask what I majored in college, I tell them baseball. And there's two lessons I learned from Coach Denning that I carried with me in all the things that I've done. One, Potential is worth zero. Two, over hustle is stupid. His lessons live on. Rest in peace, coach. I want to share a, a quick story about Coach Denning. That we're uh, back after we won the 2009 championship, we received gold watches, and I had it in my car to go bring it home, get sized over the weekend. And the next morning, I woke up and my car was stolen, watch gone, and everything. And I went into coach, told him what happened. He uh, didn't even blink. He just reached behind his desk and said, here, have mine. Um, and coach wouldn't let me leave without that. And so that watch is special to me um, because of the national championship, but probably even more that uh, coach uh, gave me his. Dennis, I just want to tell you, uh, you're going to be missed. You've done so much for me in my life. Uh, I can say I'm one of only a very few players, maybe just Buzzy and I, that had the honor of having you coach us in high school and college. And the lessons that you taught us and taught me on the baseball field and as a human being, I've shared with me my entire life and it's allowed me to coach my kids and other kids in this community, uh, the lessons of Dennis Denning. Uh, again, not just how to be a great ball player, but how to be a great human being. So you're going to be missed. I'll see you again someday soon and just know the legends never die. I am so grateful that I had Coach Denning at the University of St. Thomas. We had so many cool experiences as a baseball team playing baseball in Cuba playing in the College World Series. Those are experiences that shape you as a person in a positive way, and it leaves a lasting impact. He also had life lessons that he gave on and off the field, and some that I catch myself remembering as I say them out loud, like if you're not early, you're late, and all the baseball tips he gave me, I passed down to my sons as well. Thank you, Coach Denning. Rest in peace. Dennis Denning spent a life of empowering other people. He genuinely enjoyed his life, his family. He practiced what he preached, being a good teammate to every person that he met. He taught with clear and simple methods that made complexity simple and turned it into confidence inside everyone. Uh, for 51 years, he was my friend, mentor, uh, head coach, inspired. Uh, Dennis is one of those irreplaceable people in your life. I make this video with a heavy heart. I want to send my condolences to Coach Denning's family and I want to say rest in peace to Coach Denning. Um, I still remember the first time I met you. I came into your office. I don't even think you looked up. You asked me what my high school stats were. I told you and you basically told me I wasn't good enough to play for your team as it sat. But what it taught me was it's not about what you say, it's about what you do, because you gave me an opportunity to try out and things worked out and you had supreme confidence in your players. And that gave us the ability to go out and do great things. So I just want to say rest in peace. Your legacy will live on through the Bulldogs and we're going to miss you. Dennis Denning could always bring the best out of people. What was unique to me was that the way that he so often empowered an individual by believing in them, maybe at a time when they didn't have confidence in themselves. And that led to, in the beginning, not wanting to let Coach down. But over time, I found is that you wanted to reward Coach for him believing in you. So whether that was success on the or off field, it was that uh, there's so few people that find positives in, in everybody and that uh, it only felt fair that you could reward some portion of that back to him. Coach will be extremely missed. I have so many great memories of Coach Denning. He was very instrumental in my life, both on the field and off the field. And 
what I love most about coach was not only was he the best baseball coach, he also coached us to be very successful off the field as well. And I know he took a great deal of joy in seeing that. Uh, his legacy is going to live on through his players. I still find myself using some classic coach lines uh, with my kids and players that I coach today. So we'll miss you, coach. I'm kind of torn making this video because anyone who knows Dennis knows he wouldn't want to be in the spotlight um, or have the attention and focus on him. So he's probably pretty pissed at all of us for making these videos, but uh, oh well. Um, I can confidently say that I learned as much from Dennis Denning on the baseball diamond over four years as I did in any um, classroom at St. Thomas. Um, he instilled so many life lessons and values in all of his players. He taught us how to um, work hard and uh, ingrained a quiet confidence in each one of us so that when a big moment arose, we were ready for it and able to you know, accomplish the task at hand. He dared us to be great and challenged us to try to do more than we ever thought we were capable of. And those are the things that I think all of us players use every day in our, in our lives moving forward. And I think Dennis's legacy um, continues with each one of us as we teach our kids or players that we coach and these little Dennisisms come out. We tell kids to dare to be great or, or be a bulldog and not a puppy dog. So uh, we'll never do it the way that Dennis did because he's the greatest. But um, I think we all will have a smile every time we say one of those uh, Dennis uh, catchphrases. So um, coach, we love you. Thank you for everything and you'll truly be missed. I'm so grateful for my time playing for Coach Denning and for what he saw in me as a player and as a person even though I may not have seen it in myself at the time. I was a shy, skinny kid who showed up for tryouts, and Coach Denning said I had ice in my veins. And for some reason, I believed him. And I think if there's one thing a great coach can do, it's to bring out the best in people and make them believe in themselves. And Coach Denning was a legend. Hey, Coach Denning. It's truly been an honor knowing you and playing baseball for you at St. Thomas. Winning the national championship in 2009 has and always will be one of the best moments of my life. Looking back, the lessons I learned from you had a large impact on me as with so many other players and students that worked with you throughout the years. Your simple, logical approach to challenges and your intensity will always be the way I remember you. Go Tommies and rest in peace, coach. Hi everybody, Bucky Burgell from Concordia. I'm wearing this Tommy cap today in, in honor of Dennis. And uh, I think the message behind me right here in baseball as in life, all the important things happen at home. And that was certainly the case with uh, Dennis. I really enjoyed our competitive uh, games that we had against the Tommies and always left the field uh, after playing the Tommies uh, learning something new about baseball. Uh, God bless Dennis and his memory and God bless Dennis's family. Describing the impact that old man had on my life in 30 seconds or less seems uh, like another Denning mental gymnastics routine. An impossible task where he just probably wanted to see how you reacted rather than a result. Baseball side of our relationship is pretty relevant. He's got the recognition. He always knew the right things to say or do. But his ability to push and mold men is why we're all devastated. The, ending, the alias I ended my career with was Chris Denning. Um, good, fun with friends. Um, maybe some jealousy for those that under, didn't understand, but you know, I knew the journey and I knew the roller coaster that we had and I kind of wore it as a badge of honor. I think what you do realize about Denning is he always had a plan. He wanted you to be the best and he wanted to push you to get the most out of you. Um, Dennis pushed me to be myself. Uh, in a world that's pretty hard to be yourself, um, but what I learned is he wanted everybody to have principles and a foundation of how you approach life, your family, your hurdles. Um, compete, be accountable, be the relentless bulldog. Um, people don't have to understand, they just have to appreciate. What a legend. Thanks, Dennis. Dare to be great. Hey, coach. Just want to say how much I appreciate the significant impact you had in a very important time uh, in my life. Not only the things you taught us on the ball field, but uh, the important life lessons that will uh, serve us forever. And uh, how much I appreciate 
and I'm going to miss your friendship, uh, your mentorship, your genuine interest in our well-being and success long after our time in the program. And uh, pretty amazing to see all the relationships you helped create and the legacy that you're going to continue to have. We'll miss you. Hey, Bulldogs. Quick uh, Coach Denning story. Uh, it was funny. I, I grew up with Dennis uh, in the Denning family. Spent uh, a lot of time with them. Uh, had some Fourth of July parties at their cabin. And as a kid, I, I always uh, got a got a kick out of Dennis and, and his sense of humor. So I thought I'd tell a quick little funny story about Dennis as we learned the news that he was leaving uh, Creton Durham Hall and going to St. Thomas. So uh, Paul Rafferty and I thought it'd be good to send over to him his first recruiting visit. Uh, video and uh, we created a video uh, the gentleman's name was Juan Salazar and Paul Rafferty stepped in as the recruit uh, we put a mustache on Paul drew it in, drew on, drew it on him I believe we threw some earrings in his ears uh, could have put a Miller light in his hand and uh, away we sent the video to coach Denning really highlighting you know how, how talented he was you know he could run he could he could bunt he could play defense. Uh, he was coachable. All the things and attributes that Dennis looked for in his players and what he uh, would have liked to have called one of his favorites. So uh, long story short, uh, we sent the video over, but as you guys all know, Dennis wasn't the most uh, technically inclined. So I think Dennis got the videotape, didn't know how to put it in the cassette, didn't know how to play it. And uh, we had to end up going over to Dennis' house and, and put in the, the VHS and play the recording video. and. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget the story of uh, the laughs that Dennis had with that, but we knew he was going, going to go uh, on to have a, a, su a successful career knowing that he knew how to recruit and he was in the big time of recruiting. So uh, thanks all. Um, my condolences to the Denning family and uh, see you all very soon. I was fortunate to play for Coach Denning in the mid 80s when I was in middle school for Hightower Babe Ruth. I played against his teams in high school and then I was very, very fortunate to be able to be on his first University of St. Thomas baseball team when I was a senior in 1995, which was an absolute thrill. To be able to play for his first team at St. Thomas and end my competitive baseball playing career with him as my coach, I couldn't have asked for more. I will attest that playing for Dennis in the mid 80s and then playing for him again in 1995, his ways of teaching baseball and life skills never changed, and I will guarantee that was the, the case throughout his entire coaching career from 1978 through 2009. He impacted so many people, and the skills that he taught me and my teammates, you know, back then, I still use them to this day. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to know and have played for Coach Denning. Quite simply, he was the best coach that I ever had. Two quick stories about Dennis Denning. First, I learned how to interact with umpires. He always uh, walked out slowly, engaged the umpire, made his point, turned around and walked away and never showed anyone up. Secondly, I cherish the relationship I developed with Dennis over the years. He was my mentor and he always reached out and we drove to conference meetings together. And in the car, we didn't talk about baseball. We talked about family, we talked about life and really enjoyed developing my friendship with Dennis, um, and he just meant the world to me as he did to many of you. The first time I met Coach Denning, I was a little shaver down at Battle Creek Park in St. Paul. When he left the field that day, I'd never been so motivated to play the game of baseball. Fast forward 20 years, and I was blessed to be on his staff at the University of St. Thomas. A year after that, Dennis played a huge role in me obtaining a head college coaching position. Dennis, thank you for the baseball and more importantly, the life lessons. Your legacy will live on for generations to come. I came to Minnesota because of Coach Denning. He told me to pick a school that even if he got hurt on the first day, he'd still want to be at that school. I knew the day I met him that St. Thomas was the school for me and it proved to be one of the best decisions I ever made. I learned so much from Coach Denning as a baseball player. I didn't realize how much I had learned until I started coaching myself. He changed the way I viewed the game and showed me the importance of relationships. The relationships he built with players was inspiring. He cared deeply about all of us. But I'm most thankful for what I learned off the field. The lessons learned have made me a better husband, father, and coach. 
to co- the Denning family, I'm so sorry for your loss. Please know the impact will be felt for generations to come. I will forever cherish my time with Coach Denning. Thank you, Coach Denning. I just want to share a Coach Denning story. The 2001 National Championship game. Brian Winter, he's on the mound. It's late in the game. He's probably thrown 300 pitches in two and a half days. And walks the leadoff guy. We have a run lead or a couple run lead. Can't remember. But Coach Denny comes out of the dugout, meet with him on the mound and all of us, and says, hey, I need to know if you can throw it over the plate. Because if you can't, I'll get somebody else who will. And just looks at him dead in the eye. And, of course, Winter, he says, I can do it, gets out of the inning, and, and we end up winning the whole thing. But it's just another story, Coach Denny knowing what to say at the right time to the right guy, and I find myself very lucky to have played for him and very fortunate to call him a friend. Um, obviously, we'll miss him. Love you, Coach. It was truly a sad day hearing of Dennis's passing. He was not only a great competitor, motivator, coach, and teacher, role model, and a family man, but was even a better friend. He fought hard on the ball field, but always left it there. We talked more about other things such as football than we ever did about baseball. He was always interested in what else was going on in your life. I certainly remember epic battles on the ball field and they were great. Having Dennis in our league made us all better. It certainly made me better. A true friend, and I will never forget Dennis. My thoughts go out to his family. I know you will always remember all the great times you all shared. Peace, my friend. Coach Denning is a once in a lifetime person that I've had the pleasure to meet. Back in 96 to 2000, he was my coach at St. Thomas. A lot of life lessons learned from coach. Driving home from a sectional game on the bus, I remember when coach said, hey, Frainer, you ever think about coaching? Well, at that, at that moment, he planted the seed. And today, his messages resonate to youth that I fortunately get to coach. So dare to be great, be the most liked kid on the team. Guys I play are the guys that work hard, things like that. Coach Standing had a simple way of putting it, and his message lives on. Hey, it's Johnny Teller, head men's basketball coach at the University of St. Thomas. I've known Dennis since I was six years old. First at his T-ball league at Nativity grade school then as close friends with his son Wes and playing for him at Creighton Durham Hall and then coaching for a decade while he and I were both at St. Thomas and thought it would be appropriate today to be out by the field at St. Thomas where he taught thousands of kids around the state so many lessons starting with raking your position after every game and along with that the humility the selflessness the teamwork that came along with that his legacy will live on forever the impact will continue on and we're also grateful. Love you, Dennis. Coach Denning was a legend. He taught me a lot, not just about baseball, but about life too. For that, I'll be forever grateful. I do have a few memories just from uh, driving by the field, seeing him mowing that riding lawnmower, to taking me to Digidio's for lunch after his little clinics, and also lighting the mound on fire before a VFW game, just so we could play that day after a long rainstorm. We'll miss you, Coach. On behalf of the St. Olaf Baseball Program, I'd like to send our best to the Denning family and to Chris O'Lean and the outstanding St. Thomas Baseball Program. It was always a thrill to take the field against St. Thomas because you knew you were facing a group of guys who love the game, were going to compete really hard, and who absolutely did it the right way. They were a true reflection of Dennis. So I'm so, th- I'm so thankful to be part of that rivalry and the mutual respect that went along with it. Your goal should not be to be the best player, but the most liked teammate every year. And that is coming from the most competitive mother effort you are ever going to meet. Dennis's brilliance was knowing how to get the best out of each and every one of his players and teams, but not sacrificing the bigger picture and teaching us valuable life lessons along the way. I am extremely grateful um, to have the opportunity to play for Dennis and call him coach, but even more grateful for the opportunity to get to know him off the field and call Dennis a friend. Dare to be great. I'm going to miss you, coach. You really got everything you could ask for with Dennis as a coach, but the one thing that really stands out looking back was 
he always liked to say, winning is only fun when you have a chance to lose. And he really wanted you to earn your success. And that wasn't just with winning baseball games, but wanting to do well in school, with your career, or any other challenges you face in life. And it's pretty special to have a coach that was looking out for his players like that. So thank you for everything, Coach Denning. We love you. And we're going to miss you. Coach, thank you for teaching all of us players what dedicated, consistent effort can bring to both our lives on and off the field. Um, you stressed uh, team culture and identity even before it was a, a thing. Your example and mentorship uh, has meant so much to so many players and so many coaches. I'm just grateful that I have the opportunity to call you coach. When I think of Dennis, the word that comes to my mind is thankful. Uh, thankful for the opportunity to be able to play in his camps as a little kid every summer, to being able to work for him through college and my early years of coaching here at St. Mary's, and just the mentorship that he has shown myself and so many others. Uh, the one thing that I will miss the most and appreciate the most were the weekly phone calls his last year coaching, and, and that happened to be my first year coaching, but the calls every week to see how things were going, to see how he can help, and uh, everything that he's done for myself and, and my family, uh, just over heartfelt thank you. It's hard to imagine what baseball would be like in the state of Minnesota without Dennis Denning and the impact he's had on so many and the countless boys and girls that he's impacted in the Minneapolis-St. Paul baseball community. Dennis helped build baseball in the state and he is truly one of the legends of the game, and he will never be forgotten. My deepest condolences to the Denning family. Without Dennis, many of us would not be where we are today. I would never have gotten into coaching. I would have never gone into St. Thomas, and I know countless, if not hundreds of kids would also feel the exact same way. And for what he has done for my life and countless other hundreds of lives that he has helped impact, Dennis will be greatly missed. He is a legend and he is one of the true great people, not just baseball coaches, but great people in the game. He helped build not just competitive championship teams at St. Thomas and Creighton Durham Hall, but he helped build men and he helped cultivate relationships and he made everything better. Just by being him and being the unique person that he was. Without him, I'm not sure any of us would have the same passion and the same drive that we have in life today. But Dennis was truly one of the great men that I've ever met and he will be deeply missed. And condolences to the Denning family. We will miss you, Dennis. I love you. Thank you again for everything you've done. You are going to truly be missed but never be forgotten. I was very fortunate to know Dennis Denning at a very young age. Um, when I got to St. Thomas, um, one of the things that was apparent was just the love that he had from his players, the trust and and uh, the belief that, that they had in him and you know nobody wanted to let him down and uh, that was very evident when I got there and um, you know that was the same thing that I held with the dentist too. He was, he was a father figure to me and, and um, you know, we didn't want to disappoint him. And I think that's what made his team so successful. And uh, he cared about us and he cared about beyond just baseball and wanted us to have, you know, quote, one of them good jobs that, that he always talked about. And, uh, you know, I'm extremely proud to have come from St. Thomas and played for him there. And uh, Dennis has just been a tremendous impact on my life. It, it's hard to put into words. A quick Dennis Denning story I wanted to share. Um, so one time in the field house, we were taking ground balls. Usually the catchers were catched off for Dennis, but uh, for whatever reason, he didn't have a catcher with him. So he was just hitting ground balls to us in the field house. And uh, um, I remember Jake Maurer um, bouncing one into him that uh, came up and hit Dennis right in the eye uh, when he was hitting fungos. And um, you know, so the fungal bat drops and he goes down, he's holding his eye. And, and of course, we're all kind of laughing and trying to hide our laughter. Um, you know, we knew he wasn't seriously hurt, but he was upset. And uh, 
the funny part about it, obviously, was Jake was one of his favorite players and couldn't have happened to a better guy. We thought that uh, <laughs> he was going to take the brunt of it. But um, so, um, you know, the next day at practice, his eye had totally swollen shut. So he brings us into the into the huddle and he's like, all right, we're going to work on first and Thursday and uh, probably do some bunt defense. And uh, I know referees laughing at me or whatever in the background, <laughs> so we just lost it. And uh, it was just uh, one of the funny stories that I was thinking about and wanted to share. I want to express my condolences to the Denning family for losing a great man and uh, certainly a huge figure in uh, baseball circles in the state of Minnesota. Dennis was a great friend of mine, a uh, colleague, uh, and certainly a man that I admired in the coaching profession. Uh, we wish his family nothing but the best going forward. His son Wes played for us in the middle 90s, was an outstanding player for us, and just a, a huge loss for the baseball community. And uh, I want to express my sympathies uh, to the Denning family, and uh, hopefully uh, we can all benefit from our relationships with him and uh, as we move forward here. Um, try to remember the good times. One of the things they don't tell you or teach you, nor do you really realize at the time when you're coming to play for St. Thomas, wearing that purple, is that you've already got a leg up on the competition. As soon as you step on the field, step over the white line, you've already got an edge. Part of it's the guys, the talent we've always had, but the main reason, it's Coach Denning. He personifies next man up mentality dare to be great and it manifests obviously in the success that he's had on the field over the years but I think even more importantly it's the impact that he's had on so many guys' lives including my own off the field heroes get remembered but legends never die R.I.P. coach love you to me the best thing about coach Denning was that he made people unafraid to fail he'd have more confidence in you than you'd have in yourself he prepare you for your moment without you even realizing it. So when your time came, not only were you unafraid to fail, but you didn't fail. Coach Denning also put his credibility uh, and reputation on the line for many people that were unproven and was willing to accept the results no matter what. And to me, that's the ultimate form of leadership. So I thank him for that. From McCarthy Gym to Havana, Cuba, to Appleton, Wisconsin, Thanks, Coach. Could have been to any of those places without you, uh, not to mention being the man I am today without you either. Thank you uh, for all the love and lessons you taught me in this world. Rest in peace to the number 18. The best 18 in sports, Peyton Manning and Daryl Strawberry don't count. Love you, Coach. Well, was Hanahan, 1998. Uh, Green Daryl, 94. Um, I want to share a story about rooming with Dennis, having Dennis as a room dog. 2008, uh, NCAA winter meetings. Huck was really sick and uh, we had dog at work. And so I got tapped uh, to go to Vegas with Dennis to the NCAA winter meetings. Um, absolute blast, landed. Dennis loved to gamble, loved his blackjack. Went up to our room, grabbed a six pack and I'm drinking uh, Six pack with Dennis, watching sports. I mean, didn't get any better than that. I tell stories. And, um, you know, I've, my life flashed. Uh, you know, I've known Dennis since I was eight years old. And it was just a really special time to uh, share with him. Um, Dennis then went, grabbed his wallet, double locked the doors, jumped in bed, and uh, looked over at me and said, uh, you know, you sleep with your wallet, right? Sort of, huh? I was like, what? I'm like, I don't sleep with my wallet. He's like, you got to sleep with your wallet. He tells me a story when he was in the Meyer Leagues in Baltimore. Uh, someone broke into his room and uh, took his wallet out of his pants on the floor. And so anytime Dennis is ever in a hotel, he sleeps with his wallet under his pillow. So if you ever got an argument with Dennis, you go and you get your wallet and um, I put my wallet under my pillow and uh, we hit the lights and Dennis was out in three minutes. Dennis Denning was the worst snorer 
sleep apnea, breathing heavy. It was like he was wrestling a bear all night. I slept for about 90 minutes, and obviously I was still freaked out with the story about him describing someone breaking into his hotel room. I wake up with Dennis hanging over me, shakes me, and goes, we got 60 minutes to play blackjack before the meeting start. Let's go. And uh, I just was startled and I almost punched him. It was just a great moment and it was very special. We're all gonna miss him dearly. And um, what a great tribute um, that spring. Obviously, 09 sends him off with the national championship. Um, carried him off. So let's celebrate on Monday and Tuesday. St. Thomas, thank you for doing this. Uh, can't wait to see everybody. Thanks. Uh, Chris Oleen, class in 99. Uh, had the pleasure of playing for Dennis for four years, working for him for nine. Um, so many uh, great memories and stories to, to think about sharing. Um, at the heart of everything, you had life lessons every day that you just ran into with, you know, that seemed really unintentional, but when you go back and look at it, he definitely had intention to everything he did. Um, but the stuff I kind of like to point back to is um, the ones that are a little bit more funny or add humor um, to some of the things that, that uh, I guess, made him so fun to be around. Um, one that comes to mind that's um, a little bit older, but one of my first years as, as an assistant coach for Dennis, um, we were down in Florida uh, playing at Terry Park in uh, Fort Myers. And we were kind of still up and coming as a uh, Division three program. We weren't really established yet, you know, kind of a new kid on the block that was making some noise. And we're playing uh, UW-Whitewater. And it's a doubleheader. Uh, Whitewater came in and they were ranked, um, you know, top five in the country. And I think we were just, just skimming the top 25, just kind of getting to that point. And we play them and they have uh, two pitchers that are potentially draft worthy. Um, one of them actually did get drafted by the Cubs. Um, and was a really good pitcher for a while. And so they um, they beat us the first game uh, pretty handily. I think it was about a five nothing shutout. Um, we didn't play bad, but you know, didn't do much off their pitcher. And so between the game, the, the team's uh, pretty down and um, just kind of felt defeated and didn't really know what we're gonna do with the second one. And kind of out of nowhere, Dennis gets up, takes everybody down the line, and he says, all right, guys, here's what we're gonna do. Um, this is between the doubleheader. We're gonna play Crows and Cranes. And I, I'm kind of looking, I'm like, what are we doing here? And uh, you know, Crows and Cranes. And so, you know, whatever you wanna call it, ships across the ocean. You know, there's a billion, it's like a kid's grade school game. And so our entire team lines up in the outfield and um, they line up and play crows and cranes for about 15 minutes. And they're having a blast, right? Laughing, you know, having a good time. You look across at the whitewater bench as they're getting ready for game two. And they're just out in front of their dugout, arms crossed, shaking their head, can't believe what they're watching, right? And, you know, I really didn't know what to think, right? I was like, I, you know, I felt like we would need to get dialed in to play again and, um, you know, get done guys are light ready to go and you know sure enough we show up for game two um beat them handily i think we beat them like six to one or seven to one in game two and again it's just one of those examples where uh, dennis pushes the right button in a really unconventional way and um he seemed to do that throughout his entire career so um so many more stories i can share but for me that that's one that stands out as just uh kind of a unique thing that dennis could do so um never met a better coach um phenomenal mentor and gonna miss him a lot.